I want to do a video here talking about what, what I think is a misuse of a term, good cigarettes. Now, were there some cigarettes that may have tasted good? Sure. You'll hear most smokers will attest. There were moments where they just had a cigarette that tasted good. More accurately, I think, in some cases, there were some people who were just found themselves getting this really, you know, this fix. It's a drug. They were getting a fix. And it may have been at a time after a stressful experience or a real great celebratory experience where they had a cigarette right at the tail end and, oh, they got this, you know, magic moment out of that, the, that puff that they had or that cigarette that they had. And they'll call that a good cigarette. But when you consider we're dealing with a drug addiction, and every time they took a cigarette, they were reinforcing the need to sustain smoking. Those good cigarettes resulted in all the rotten cigarettes that went after it. It resulted in the expense of maintaining an addiction, which was not insignificant in cost. This was a very expensive addiction to support over a lifetime. It's interfering with their quality of life on many fronts, their productivity, their ability to socialize when they're in environments that don't allow them to smoke, and there's a lot more and more of those environments around. It's, again, the package deal of smoking, the health implications that went with it, the fact that it was taking away their ability to breathe, even the cigarettes, even the cigarettes that they took that were good in the sense of they enjoyed the flavor, they enjoyed the experience, those cigarettes were destroying lung tissue, no question about it. Those cigarettes were depositing cancer-producing chemicals within their lungs, no doubt about it. One of these days, one of those you know, administrations was going to turn a cell. Hey, maybe it was one of the really good cigarettes that did it. Is that a good cigarette if it started a process which you know ends up in costing you your life? But again, even in the case where it's not one that you know, causes a dramatic turn, if you're dealing with someone who has some sort of breathing issues already, again, every puff they are taking, it's no longer destroying reserve capacity. It's destroying capacities that they needed to be able to, you know, breathe correctly, to be able to do activities that they either enjoyed doing or having to do. The idea of a good cigarette is just such a misuse of a term when you realize what this product is and what it was doing to them. Don't sit and fix it on how much you would like a good cigarette. Always remember what cigarettes were like at the end. They were annoying enough that you quit smoking. If you're a former smoker, the odds are when you first quit, it took a certain amount of courage up. It took a certain amount of impetus to get that quit started. You may have dealt with withdrawals that you had to put up with. You have dealt with all these adjustment periods that went on afterwards. You were motivated to stop because, not because of the good cigarettes, but because of all the rotten cigarettes that were, went along with it and all the problems that went with those rotten cigarettes. And you realize you didn't want any part of this anymore. Well, if you don't want any part of being a smoker, again, it's a matter of not just thinking about the good cigarette, but when you do get that memory, remembering all the rotten ones that went with it and all the problems that went with the others, and the more you remember you know, cigarettes in their entirety, the more committed you will stay to stick to your commitment to never take another puff.